Hi guys. Okay, in this video, rather than look at knitting sort of brand new objects, what we're going to look at do is a method to repair knitted or woolen objects. Um, excuse my voice, guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm filming this from in bed where I've been for a week with the flu. <laughs> um, so yeah, the the voiceover might get a bit interesting this week. Um, first of all. The method we're going to use this week is basic darning. Um, we're going to use it to fix this sock, which was originally a knitted sock. This isn't one I made, and you can see it's been done on quite fine. Get the auto zoom. Ooh, there you go, auto focus. Um, it's been done on quite a fine sort of needle. Um, the yarn we're using for this. I'm using, I think this is a four ply. This is slightly thicker than you would use. On something this fine, you would really want to ideally be using a two ply wool, something quite thin, even embroidery sort of cotton. Um, but because I want you to be able to see the technique, um, we're using a slightly thicker wool and also we're using it in a completely different colour. Um, I quite like using contrasting colours when I'm fixing socks because I think it looks really funny to have all these brightly coloured patches um, but obviously if you wanted it to look as it was you would use a, a yarn that matched as closely as possible um, other things you will need to do this are a darning mushroom if you don't have a darning mushroom it's fine use anything that is easy and comes to hand you can use the bottle, bottom of a plastic water bottle again I apologise for my fingernails I've been ill um, the other one which works quite well which I sometimes use to do holes in like the toes these little like rounded deodorant bottles not bottles you know roll on applicators work quite well as well Tennis balls work, but honestly, the mushrooms and the darning eggs aren't particularly expensive. Mine's a funky little vintage one, um, but you can buy them online quite inexpensively. Um, I will put a link up there um, with a link to the blog post, which will also appear at the end, which will um, give you a link to all the links to all the equipment and things you might need. Um, obviously, we're going to use, I'm using a big chunky plastic darning needle because it's you can see it really easy on the demo you can use you can get these in all different sizes the main thing is they want to be quite blunt um but obviously the finer they get obviously if you can do this on really fine knitted stuff um and the finer it is the smaller the needle you want um other than that we just need a pair of scissors okay i've taken a good length i've taken probably about a meter here because that's i may need more than that i probably will but that's kind of as much as I want to work with at any one time. Otherwise, it just gets a faff to work with. Um, and threaded that through my needle. Now, I'm just going to take my sock and turn it inside out. Turn it inside out. Okay. And we're going to find the hole. Now, we are going to pop our darning mushroom up inside. Now, this is a big hole. You should always fix them before they get this ridiculously big. <laughs> this is silly, to be honest. You don't want to pull it too tight either. Okay. That's about there. Nope. Yeah, these, this is, is a slightly ridiculous size to be repairing, but we will repair it anyway, just to show it can be done. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, if you want to imagine that you, I'm going to slide this over slightly. You want to imagine sort of a square around the, the hole that you're fixing. And you want to work, you kind of want to work to that square. This will make sense when you see how we're going with this. Again, this is a traditional sort of um, very basic darning method. There are other darning methods which are a lot more complicated. But um, we're going to go for the easy one to start with. Okay. So we're going to start by just... I'm going to start over here. And we're just going to start by going along. 
Now we're going to make sort of a grid. Now I'm not tying a knot in this, but I'm going to leave a nice long tail there that I can hold so I know it's not going anywhere. Just tuck that under my thumb. Now we want to make this grid pattern over our hole. So we're going to start, we're going to go in a straight line from that corner straight across. So the next one we're going to put in is going to be down here. Now you want to follow the runs, the runs, the rows. So as you can see, we're going to follow this in a straight line and we're going to go down to about here. Yeah. So we're going to take that to there. We want to put in one next to it. I'm going to keep them quite close. So I'm going to run one in there. Just pick that up. Down. And you can see basically we're just building up a row but covering the hole like this. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this and then come back and you can see what we're aiming towards. Bit of a big gap there, but that's all right. I'm sure we'll work it out. <laughs> Gotta say, this isn't exactly fine fabric restoration, but the other thing you want to notice is that I'm not going right close to the edges of the hole. You want to give it a good sort of half, half an inch, and don't pull this too tight. You're not closing the hole up, okay? It will tighten a bit because obviously this hole here has expanded um but as you can see we just keep going until you cover it up with these crisscross sections okay we now have all of sort of that direction of yarn put in um i have stretched this wider than i had because it makes it a bit easier to do it from the other direction now as predicted i didn't have anywhere near enough yarn in there so i'm gonna i've threaded another bit and we're gonna start these are gonna be the first few we catch probably just these three actually but i'm gonna catch the yarn Way back over here, somewhere. There we go. And just pull it through and leave a tail on it to get hold of. Okay. And then we're just going to go under, over, under, over, under, over. And then we're going to pop in. A stitch to hold it there. This is worse to do around a camera than knitting is. <laughs> no bad. Okay, and then we're going to go back, and this time we're going to catch this one as well. So again, we're going to go under, over, under, over, under, over. Again, and 
kind of not. You see how this is sort of going into like a basket weave situation? Do you see that? Yeah? See? Let's do one more. So I'm going to hook this in for that one. And then I'm going to come back across. I want to catch this one this time as well. So we're going to go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Yeah. See how it's building up now? Yay. Now, but at the very start of the video, when I said putting it into like a square, that sounded a bit double dutch, especially when you're looking at this shape going, that's not a square. I know. But what I was getting at is, this is a, sort of when you're doing the basket weave like this, you can't, if you have a chunk missing like that, it makes this really difficult. So it, it kind of needs to be, it does it a little bit here, but not noticeably. Not enough for it to cause a problem. What you do want to be doing is getting to this bit and then have another bit over here that comes way up because then you've got either a big expansive wall doing nothing or you have to do it in two separate chunks. So try and keep it as sort of a solid <laughs> glob, if you like, of wool. Now, I'm going to do some more of these and then I'm going to come back so you can get a bit of a better look at it um, when we're a little bit further down and it'll really start to take shape. Okay, we're coming towards the end now. You can see how this is coming together. Um, yeah, so I've got probably a couple more of these rows to do. Now, I haven't got somewhere to go into on this one. I made a bit of a mistake. You know, before now, I was going to make sure it's a cohesive loop my big technical phrase on this one where it's actually started to mend and it started to pull close together this one's way up here so all i'm going to do is just catch a little stitch there just to give it a little bit more stability before i go on and do these ones there we go i think we are almost there The reason why I didn't tie any of these ends in and they're all loose as well is because you can see this is a little loose. It, this should be fine once it comes off the mushroom. But what it will do is allow... Um, it will allow me to pull them slightly tighter and, and work out the tension here if I need to. So if any of them appear incredibly loose or... Anything like that. Another one through there. Da, 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 da. Work one more back. Pick up a couple of stitches. Just run that into the corner. 
And there we go. Ta-da! Now, I'm going to take the mushroom out. And have a look at this. Yeah. That is actually pretty good. It's a little bit gappy, but... I don't want to... Let's see, you can adjust the tension a little bit. To be honest with you, by the time this goes through the wash, you don't want it to be too dense because obviously knitting is quite flexible in itself. But yeah, there we go, we've patched it. Now I'm just going to, I'm going to pop just a little knot in these ends to secure it. Don't you pull too tight. Do these ones as well. I'm going to trim our ends. Trim, ding, and trim. Now flip sock right way and we have it repaired I'm going to put the mushroom in it just so you can see sort of how it will look when it is on but there you go fixed sock now some people like to trim these edges way back I tend to just leave them. The other thing you can do is you can sort of catch them and stitch them in if you like. Um, just to make it look a bit, little bit neater, you can bind these down. Um, so sort of like just catch it over the edge and knit them in. It's up to you. To be honest with you, by the time you wear them a couple of times, because socks kind of wear to their shape and sort of self felt a bit, they'll, um, they'll go together. But yeah, there you go. One repaired... Suck. <laughs>